advertisements. You imagine a career unfolding with the glamour and drama of your idol, Christina Yang. However, placements are randomized and you find yourself in Mahlulu and Pumalanga. <sighs> okay, this change in plan just requires a bit of a change in perspective. On call, Sandile Shongwe, a 17-year-old boy, gets wheeled into the front room. He has endured a high-energy MVA injury. You have seen this before as these kinds of fractures are most common in young males. But you have never had to deal with it on your own. Feeling the panic rising, you take a deep breath and remember all the things you were taught three years ago in your orthopedic block. The best block ever. Below is a femur fracture classification. In this presentation, we'll mainly focus on femoral fracture common in younger patients and that results secondary to high energy trauma. High energy trauma can result in any of the femoral fractures previously noted, but these are the most common and are traditionally associated with MVAs. Femur shaft injuries. These present with pain in the thigh, which is tense associated with bruising and swelling. With a closed femur fracture, you can expect blood loss as much as 1 to 1.5 liters. There is limited range of motion secondary to pain. With an incident of 37 per 100,000 persons per year, it is fairly common. It is associated with ligament injuries and ipsilateral femoral neck fracture. Imaging needed to be an x-ray. Request AP and lateral view of the entire femur, ipsilateral hip, AP and lateral view of the ipsilateral hip of the ipsilateral knee. In treating a fracture, the objectives are to regain and maintain normal alignment of the injured part, to regain normal function, and to achieve the above objectives for the patient in the shortest time possible. The first priority in treatment is to rule out other life-threatening injuries and stabilize the patient. ATLS guidelines should be followed. Reduction of a fracture must be commenced within the first 72 hours following injury. Non-operative splintage and traction should be performed for initial stabilization and pain control before surgery. Apply skeletal traction with up to 10 kgs via Thompson splint for 7 to 10 days until leg length is restored. Reduce weight to 4, 4 kgs. The indications are patient unfit for surgery, trauma setting unsuitable or immediate trauma not possible, and fracture configuration not amenable to surgical management. Before referral or definitive operative management of a femur fracture, the patient should be hemodynamically stable and fully resuscitated. The goal time for definitive surgical stabilization is generally 24 hours. So Mr. Shongwe is now stable. This is the perfect time to take a comprehensive history of the patient. Sitting down with your notes, there is a sudden realization that there is a lot of work to be done. Good note keeping is essential as they are needed um, with these as these are usually accidents with legal consequences. Femur fractures are typically associated with high rates of both short and long term disability. Operative management or traction is required for good functional outcome after a femur fracture. Skeletal traction, which typically involves having the patient lie in a bed for up to three months, prevents most patients from working and places a large burden on the patient's family. Patients should take care, an active role in the care and understanding of their disease and what is necessary for proper healing. The patient with femoral fracture should have a good understanding of his or her, or her diagnosis and the benefit and risk of treatment. Postoperatively, appropriate wound care and suture staple removal is performed as directed by the orthopedic surgeon. Depending on the type of fracture sustained by the patient, he or she may be immobilized in a splint or cast. Postoperatively, patients are examined at follow-up visits. Counsel patient not to wet or scratch and return as soon as possible if there's pain or swelling. See weekly for the first three weeks to monitor fracture displacement and tightness of the POP. See again at six weeks for x-ray to assess if it has united adequately. With trauma-related femur fracture, physical therapy following stable fixation of the femur um, to improve hip and knee range of motion, strengthening and gait training is recommended. Weight-bearing status is dependent on fracture pattern and surgical intervention. The goal of therapy 
should be for the eventual full weight bearing and res restoration of normal function. Pulmonary therapy is often needed in patients sustaining major trauma requiring prolonged bed rest. Continue to monitor with x-rays in the outpatient setting. As with all fractures, pain management should be a primary concern. Often an NSAID is prescribed at the acute pain of a fracture. However, additional medication may be necessary if the patient does not have relief with the NSAIDs alone. In this case, an opioid may be required, particularly with breakthrough pain. Analgesics ensure patient comfort, promote pulmonary toilet, and have sedating properties, which are the beneficial for patients who have sustained injury. After your talk with Sandile, he looks overwhelmed with the information you have just given him. Write down key points for the patient and revise important concepts with the patient with each visit. Below is a list of complications. Sandile is the captain of his senior soccer team. You can sense from him that it is important for him to go back into the field. Return to play criteria in patients following fem femoral fracture require absence of signs and symptoms of the original injury, full range of motion, normal strength and flexibility, and normal sport-specific mechanisms before getting into the sporting activity. Patients must be aware of their own limitations and allow themselves time to heal. Consultation with rehabilitation specialists and multidisciplinary teams can be useful in helping patients to ambulate with the aid of crutches or walking aids, ultimately to decrease post-operative mobility. One might be wondering, why on earth do I need to know the long-term management of a fracture? I'm a doctor! In an ideal world, all fracture patients have access to multidisciplinary teams. However, in some parts of South Africa, financial and human resources are spread thinly. By knowing what needs to be done for holistic management, we're able to optimize the resources we have to ensure the best outcomes for our patients.